Hello, hi, hola, Blender 2.83. Here we are, default screen, and I don't think I'm going to be using too many special things, but I am going to create a simple object. I pressed F9 to bring up this dialog, and I'm not going to fill the top and bottom of a 16 vertice cylinder, and I'm going to shape it into a vase. All right, it's not the world's most convincing vase, but what I'm going to do now is make sure the origin is in the center of the geometry, and so you can see that it actually shifted down from where it created uh, the origin in the first place. The goal is not actually to wow you with what it is that we're going to make, so a Shift D, Shift Z allows me to move this copy along the X and Y. I want three of these things. I'm going to make two materials, and then we're going to figure out, using material nodes, how to combine them onto the third vase. Uh, very simple nodes, just affecting the displacement, and I should tell you that happens in the Cycles engine. We did this before with Voronoi, thank you, keen YouTube watcher, and I didn't tell you that it was in the Cycles engine, so I'm telling you now. So here we have some simple nodes for, you can see it's glossy, and this is the Voronoi texture. This is a wave texture, and what's different is it's passing through the Z, and in order to do that you need to have Blender 2.83. Your earlier versions have a wave texture, but they don't have the bands direction. They don't have that. So it would come out diagonally no matter what. So what you would have to do is use the generated coordinates, because that's default, and then you would run it through mapping if you wished, although I think you could probably skip that. Run it to separate the X, Y, Z, and then combine the X, Y, Z. Omit the X and Y, combining only the Z axis, and then you would essentially be saying, use only the Z axis. So they've made that into one simple thing for the most recent Blender. Uh, I used to do the other way all the time because it was pretty much, it was pretty much the only way to go. Um, anyway, so the question for this video is, how do we combine this with this. They both look cool, but I want to have these bands interrupting the middle of this. So what I could do is in this node editor, which you could access from the layout view with Shift F3, you could uh, copy, you know, select everything and press Control C. That would copy it. Now what you have to do is Shift F5, take a look at the vase that you want to uh, affect after all, go to Shift F3, and you have its nodes, which are very basic, the glossy and the material output. X will delete everything that is selected, and Control-V will paste whatever's in the clipboard. So now when you go back to look at the layout with Shift-F5, it resembles it. But how do we then jam these pieces of information into the other pieces of information? So why don't we just copy from our uh, desired mix and add it to our target. I'm going to try and do this with some grace. There we go. So somehow I got to add these wave texture pieces to these Voronoi texture pieces. It's easy. So since we want to mix these two, why don't we literally use a mix RGB node? Voronoi texture <laughs> utilizes this power node and it utilizes the power node to get the effect of that hammered metal. Uh, I copied this right out of the docs, okay, I didn't make this up. Uh, I altered the numbers a little bit, but uh, it's right out of the uh, Blender docs. So since these two contribute so strongly to this appearance, I need to mix at this point in their material nodes. We're gonna pretend that these are colors of gray. That's all we're gonna do. So now we've got them 50-50, but this is not what I imagined. I want these bands to only appear in a certain area. Now what we need to do is mask that certain area. Masking is where black and white indicate where one layer should appear and the other layer should not. So why don't we just quickly add a texture which is a gradient. What we're going to do is press Control T and use Object instead of Generated. And we're going to leave the mapping node right there in between the two. So when we choose object instead of generated, a little teeny gray shadow now becomes a black line of black and white. It's not really a line though. We could force it to be a line by having that information pass through a color ramp. 
So what was a gradient, a linear gradient, can now be told to be constant going from black to white. So there's a zero, which means it will come to color one, or one which will come to color two. Uh, the factor of mixing, zero and one, are easy to equate to black and white. So why don't we plug black and white and have them dictate what will be design number one and design number two. Now we're getting somewhere. Now we understand a little bit more about how we can control these nodes. Problem is, it looks a little weird. I want this thing to stand on its end. I don't want it to be bisected. And we can rotate this through the y-axis. If I rotate the y-axis 90 degrees, now suddenly that linear gradient is treating this vase in an up and down way through the axis in the middle, through the z-axis, which is what I wanted. And it's just an illusion. Now we could do a couple of things. We could really cheat. <laughs> we could really cheat and add a color stop with control left click and then change the original. I think this works. Yeah, to white. This is actually the opposite of what I wanted, but you get the idea. So we could um, do it like this, which is very harsh. We're going to take out that harsh by uh, restoring the interpolation. I wanted it the other way around, so I could do one of two things. I could actually go through and make the white one black and the black one white, or I could go to the color and choose the invert node and it just does it real quick. It just does it for me. I could have it do it all the way or not do it at all or kind of do it halfway, which is, I guess, convenient. Anyway, I wanted it like this. I wanted it to be linear. And now I want to tighten this up. We could tighten this up by literally tightening it up and adding another uh, color stop that's black and tighten it up, you see. Or we could use a math node to tighten it up. That was not what I wanted to do. This is what I wanted to do. I could put this in the middle and you can see that it's nice and loose. Now, think of math again. This is zero and this is one. It will not go beyond one because this can be clamped to one. It will not expect a two. It will not allow a two. So what if we start multiplying everything so that it runs it as close to one as possible? What I mean is, what if we take everything that is below one and just start multiplying like crazy? So the 1 should be a 7.3. But since we've clamped the possibilities between 0 and 1, the 1 will not go beyond 1. It will not go to 7.3. However, and I can't do that kind of math, <laughs> anything that was a 0.2 times 7.3 has become a 1.46. So any grays in this range that were a point two, and they're in there somewhere. What does a point two look like? A point two looks like this. Uh, that looks like a point two oh two, but you get the idea. That shade right there, right here under my mouse, is a point two. That was multiplied and became a one. Now that's cool because with one color stop, we have now created a top and a bottom and we've clamped it. So that makes nodes make sense a little bit more. I'm going to now convert this within a color ramp because I don't want it to be so gentle. I want it to be a little bit tighter. Remember how we can make it tighter? We could physically tighten it. This is the same lesson. We could physically tighten it. And now the difference between the black and white is more pronounced. We could also use math. 
and clamp that thing down. If we've decided this is the right size, we could use our math and we could, let me make sure this is a one just so it stays the same here, multiply it by one, see the exact same thing. Once we begin to raise it, it begins to tighten. So there's a 2.2. 2. 0.2 times 2.2 brought it to a 0.44. Okay, that's cool. So what that means is we have the illusion of a little bit of a, we got a plateau and then there's kind of a nice, maybe a, the artist put their finger in there and ran a nice groove that was smooth. That's what happened there. And now we've got a vase with a little bit more interest, a little bit more contrast in the design. And that to me is sort of where the magic of uh, learning about nodes is. Now you can see that we have a bit of a mess. I am no expert on how to clean these things. I simply know basically how to manipulate uh, combining things to get a, a different result. And there's a calculator. I know how to combine things to get a different result. <laughs> and I hope that making nodes make sense gives you just as much power as you could possibly use because there's so much happening with Blender and there's so much you're able to do. You could do these single items and this single item, as I said, is from the wiki documents. You will find this hammered metal appearance as a Voronoi suggestion. But I thought, wouldn't it be fun if we could do this? We could easily combine colors and make this look like pottery, make it look like ceramics. What you make it look like is up to you. I wanted to teach you how to combine these things in the nodes. Instead of this being a combination of displacements, and you see what the scale is set to like nothing, one hundredth. Its default is one. So that's insane. Instead of it being a displacement in cycles, you could easily be using Eevee and having all of this stuff go into color. All these things, all these black and whites going into color. As a matter of fact, I kind of wonder what that looks like now that I mentioned it. So I'm going to click and drag around these because you, if you've stuck through this video, remember hearing that I said that these are essentially values of gray. Because we clamp this between 0 and 1, you see what happens if we take off the clamping? There, the whole thing is smooth. Here, it's actually behaving like there's a top and a bottom for 0 and 1. If we put this into color and have a look, this is what's been doing all that hard work. These images, it's sort of like a height map, if you will. We talked about this before, but if you wanted to make this into something real, you'd have to bake it. Uh, this is beyond the scope of this video. Baking happens in the Render Scenes tab. Um, there's combined, but we don't have any um, UV mapping, so you'd have to UV map. It just gets to be a little bit confusing. So I like to do straight materials, and I like to have those materials a little bit more procedural. Um, there's other videos for baking materials around different objects. So this was a vase that was solidified. I don't think that solidify was necessary. I simply did it for my own, you know, just for my own thing uh, around the edge here of the top without solidify and with solidify. So that does not really contribute to the uh, material that we worked on. I also made sure that it was smooth because without the smoothing, it's a it's a great big low poly chunk of a vase. I did I, I intentionally put very little effort into this because I want anyone to know that you can do it. When we make material nodes make sense, it becomes something a lot less intimidating. Hey, these are fun. I can do some of these almost every day. Those of you who are disappointed that we can't actually touch below the halfway point, uh, you could touch below the halfway point. Let me prove that to you. Somehow we can't touch below the halfway point because we've rotated it around the center uh, object origin. Okay? Because we rotated it on the y-axis, the linear gradient is um, sideways. So its x-axis is the one that you'd want to manipulate uh, to have it go up and down. Um, that up and down when it's right side up, the x-axis looks as expected. It travels, let's call it this way, uh, it travels perpendicularly to the, to the design of the gradient. So when you turn the gradient, you still want to travel 
perpendicular to the design of the gradient. And uh, that means in this case, it's the X. It still travels perpendicularly to the, uh, to the design of the gradient. I hope that made a little bit of sense. I'm sitting here like, let's make nodes make sense and then get real confusing. But that's why little videos need to be made. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, questions and comments are really appreciated. We'll do this again because it's um, a lot of fun and I think it's real necessary too. Yeah. Blend on. Take care and I'll see you again real soon.